Kia welcome to Bus Days. Right now I'm in the middle of uh, some solo charge testing. So I've installed three panels onto the roof of the bus. Um, I've only temporarily wired them in at this stage in the same, in the same way they would normally be wired in um, using the same cables and everything. So um, that's as close to the final configuration as, as we're getting. So that's essentially how they will be working on the bus. Now um, from the previous tests I'm wondering whether or not three is enough or whether they're large enough panels but you know we're yet to be seen. So I have um, I have my test bed set up and it's all plugged into the SPMS Zero which I'm kind of cheating and um, hopefully it won't confuse it too much but I'm, I'm wiring it not how um, how it should be wired and um, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest that you do this with yours in case you break it I might break mine we'll see how it goes but what I'm doing is I'm tricking it with the two shunts so the intention is to use one shunt to measure the current coming in through my DDSRs now that's the panel shunt and that would normally be measuring the, the, the solar energy going into the battery now the other shunt which would normally be on the other side of the load um, would, would normally measure flow of current in and out of the battery including load now what I'm doing is I'm taking the load director off the battery so that it doesn't see any load so that all it's measuring is power coming in and I'm not hooking it to the first shunt like it would normally be hooked to I'm hooking it directly to my MPPT solar charge controller so <clears throat> what that means is I've got both shunts measuring the current going into the battery but both from different sources so the intention then being that although it won't know how much capacity I've got left or anything like that it will know the cell voltages individually because it's plugged directly into the cell voltages so it should still work um, in terms of stopping charge when it's fully charged and stopping any load when it's flat but it won't know how much currents come out of the battery so it wouldn't ha won't have any idea on um, capacity um, but that doesn't matter because yeah I think it's still going to stop charging when it's meant to stop charging and I get to measure the difference between my DDSR 20s and my MPPT control MPPT EP ever charger so and I, figure, I figured that was important to do it this way because although I ha actually have three different um, battery monitors, the, the three different battery monitors, and I don't want to measure, I'm not trying to measure the difference between them, which maybe I could. Um, so if, if, if one's reading high, then that would distort my results. So rather than running through two different controllers so that I'm measuring it from two different sources, I'm actually measuring it with just one tool. It's got two identical shunts, both calibrated to the same unit. Um, so I should get a very, very accurate difference between the two. So solar testing is hard to do. Um, the amount of solar energy available to your panels varies constantly, literally constantly varies all day long. And in um, less than ideal conditions, like right now, where it's approaching the middle of winter and it's, um, there's a lot of rain, a lot of cloud, I can go from um, pulling over 300 watts off the roof to nothing in just seconds. So it's a really, really hard thing to do any sort of meaningful solar testing um, unless you're literally doing it side by side so that's exactly what I've set up so I've got two panels hooked up straight through the DSSRs to the battery and one panel through the DSSR 20 to my um, MPPT charge controller now 
I've done that because I've got three panels and right now I'm about to switch it over for another week with two running to the MPPT and one running direct through the DSSR so I can see if I get a gain out of running the charge controller in series um, where it's by far it's most efficient. Well, it's been seven days and these babies have been sucking solar energy well, out of the rain, really. Out of the rain and clouds, to be quite honest. So let's see how they did. What this is, actually, is the Wi-Fi connection to the SBMS Zero. Um, so it basically shows pretty much all of the, the um, monitor views all at once. So it has the battery cell voltages, the overall charge capacity which is uh, measuring incorrectly because I've got it hooked up wrong um, what the the charging is what charging or discharging is happening in both amps in both amps and watts and the net effect of that on the battery um, and the uh, graphical view of what's going on now I think another side effect of um, the way I've got the shunts set up is that it's not, uh, I don't think it's doing any balancing, I don't think I've noticed it balance on the way up or down, um, but I'm not really, not really testing for that anyway. So the two key figures here are the two top lines, that is the battery and the panels. One. I don't use the panels too logic. So after so after seven days, um, the top line is now the top line is the battery, which is which is actually the MPPT charge controller, and the bottom line is the DSSR twenties direct to battery. So during the last seven days, I've got a hundred amp hours, or perhaps a better measure. 2,600 or nearly 2,700 watt hours out of the MPPT charge controller and I've had just under 200 and which is uh, 5,200 odd watt hours out of the two DSSR 20s. Now that's slightly less than twice the MPP MPPT, which means that, ch which means the charger slightly edges out the DSSRs. So that's looking pretty good for the charge controller, um, and it's not even really a fair fight at the moment because it's getting a low voltage. Its whole goal in life is to take a high voltage and turn it into a low charging voltage perhaps more efficiently than any other way of getting power off the roof. So in order to really let it show us how good it is, I need to hook it in series to two panels. Okay, so up on the roof, I've deliberately not tied down any of these cables, so they're all pretty easy to change over. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna hook, is I'm gonna hook this panel into this panel and, and series so that I get a higher voltage at the other end where it's going to go into the charger. So I'll hook the positive on this panel to the negative on this panel and then I'll have the final positive coming from this panel back down to the bus and the negative coming from this panel. Should be pretty straightforward I think. Um, side comment, these uh these Cat5 cables running into this uh, little setup, which I don't particularly like, have actually worked out fine. Now, normally these would need to be, and, and they will definitely be in the bus, um, tethered. So they'd be attached so that there's no strain on the cable and the connector or anything like that. But while I'm playing around with it, I've got them loose and I've been moving it around near constantly every day at the least and not had any of them come out um, I did I don't know if I mentioned but because mine are stranded cables I have 
tinned them to essentially make them into a solid cable, a solid core. Anyway, I have the SBMS Zero with the USB port somewhere on it. There it is. Um, but I can't for the life of me work out how to download the logs out of here. I don't know, maybe I need some fancy hardware to plug in between the two or something. I don't know. But I can't get the logs out of here. Um, if anyone can point me into a, a way of doing that that I can understand. Um, then that would be good. However, we can see from here, now this is an example of the last 12 hours, and so that's been my solar for the last 12 hours. The top one is the DSSR 20, and the lower one is the um, MPPT charge controller. Now you can see from these profiles that right now the DSSR 20 is kicking in a little earlier in the day and uh, getting some charge in and then they follow a fairly similar sort of pattern throughout the rest of the day. They're in a different scale because this one here has peaked at 140 watts and this top one at 273. Now that should um, this is two panels, two 250 watt panels and this is only one. Well, it's been another week of terrible weather, really. Um, quite nice today, though, where we got um, a peak of just over 400 watts out of our 750 watts of panels. So that's, um, that's a bit more positive. Over that time, the MPPT controller with two panels in series has poked in 142 amp hours uh, whilst whilst at the same time the single panel through the DSSR 20 has sent in 76 so this time the DSSR 20 has slightly edged out um, the MPPT charge controller Interestingly, pretty much every day the MPPT charge controller hits a peak that's more than double what the DSSR 20 is. However, it's a bit slow to get there. Now, if I just zoom in on the morning period, and this is fairly typical for a morning, it, it, it starts off quite slow. It, it, it's like it sees a bit of sun and works it out and it says, no, 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 and then there must have been a bit of cloud there and then it's away. Whereas, and then it follows a similar profile, although it does have better peaks. Now, whereas the DSSR 20s, as soon as there's some sun, they kick in and they start going. And so, in fact, you can see it in the stacked graph, where the DSSR 20 is the blue line. It's averaging around about half, but at the, at the odd sunshine peak, perhaps, it's less than half of what's being put in by the D, the, by the MPPT charge controller. But in the morning, it's quite equal for the first maybe couple of hours, um, despite the fact that I've got two panels going in through the, the MPPT charge controller. Anyway, what it does say is that they're pretty bloody close, so when you could buy this thing for, I don't know, 50 bucks in New Zealand or something like that. Or this in New Zealand could be, well, could run you to several hundred dollars. At least a couple of hundred off of AliExpress. Then why would you? There's a lot more that can go wrong inside here. This is a pretty simple device, there's not much that can go wrong with it. And perhaps the, the main thing is it's got no capacitors, so if I didn't already have this, I probably would not buy one. That's it. Works good. Works good. On the right conditions, it will produce more power than the DSSR 20 will, but um, overall, pretty neck and neck, really. Well, there you have it. Two weeks of side-by-side -side solar charge testing between the MPPT charge controller from EPEVA 
and the DSSR20 from Electrodacus and no surprises pretty much the same it's not really that much difference um, the differences are subtle uh, the, the DSSR kicks in pretty much immediately once it gets some sun on the panels and starts putting that power straight through to the batteries the MPPT charge controller in contrast takes a little while to uh, wake up if you like but once it gets going it can hit some pretty high peaks and um, more than capable now this is now this was all done in um, pretty poor uh, solar conditions there hasn't been a lot of sun in the last two weeks uh, there's been a lot of cloud a lot of rain and so it's been you know very very average which is quite quite a good realistic test in fact it's exactly what I'm interested in I I, I, <clears throat> I mean that's where it counts in summer of course you should have ample power and it really wouldn't matter um, but when when there's not a lot of Sun around that's when your solar panels really need to shine and it turns out either methods gonna work fine um, there are definite advantages in cabling for uh, series running panels in series it uh, <coughs> the higher voltages mean you have lower um, means you have less amps which means you have thinner cable which saves quite a lot of money but beyond that uh, there's also significant savings uh, by not buying a fancy charge controller worth, worth noting the DSSR 20s are not a PWM solar charge controller they are simply a relay that connects the solar panels to the batteries directly they're just letting the panel settle at the battery voltage and provide as much current as it can. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like or subscribe or hit all the buttons. And uh, hopefully that means we'll catch you again soon. Take care. Matiwa.